Hi, Stefan. How are you doing? You're right. Hi, I think we've spoken a few times. Yeah, we have. Yeah, I think you. I think I always remember you were the first. I did an interview with you during lockdown, and you were the first person I showed my puppy to. <laughs> well, I remember that. That was amazing. Yeah, she's a lot bigger now. I can't. I don't even think I could lift her up to show you now. She's um, four times the size. But um, anyway, I loved. Well, I've only seen episode one of my practice, but I've really. I mean, it's it's, it's really good telly. But I mean, it sounds like a show from what I sort of read uh, for things you sort of said about it. You just absolutely just wanted to do from the offset, and having seen it, I can see why. But what ignited that initial sense of kind of excitement for you? That feeling that this had to be taken on. It was the well. It was the story. It was the story. I. I... I was just absolutely captivated with this world, with the with Lucinda, and you know, this is a woman who is literally everything has been thrown at her mm. all at once, and it's that it's it's a gift to come across a character like that where you know they have so many obstacles to jump through in order to like mm. just keep their head above water, and um, you know, so Grace Afouriad is writing the fact that she herself is a former doctor and this is so for me it's like finding material that you can connect with and there's so many aspects of this that like i i know this woman i've met her i've i've seen you know i think it's like it's coming out at such a like a timely moment as well and then you've got on the other hand you've got philip barantini who's whose work i'm such a huge fan of and i you know i was waiting to work with him so you know it was a no-brainer for me to jump on board and, and do this. I mean, every actor kind of has different methods and processes in regards to their kind of research. Did you do much into the world of hospitals and what nurses and kind of doctors have to go through? Yeah, well, my mum was a nurse. Um, mm. I remember actually, because we were talking about the set design of production, uh, the way in which um, the amazing production designer has created the minors, majors and resource. So we were in what to us felt like an incredibly real environment. You know, the entire set was was dressed so you could open a cabinet and take out a pair of gloves or you could pull out a drawer and start, you know, preparing um, like a suturing kit or, or cannulas. And so it, it, it allowed for you to like fully commit to the fact that this, was, this felt like a real life environment and not a set. Um, but I went and I shadowed a consultant in a hospital. I needed to understand how, when you, you know, I wanted to understand, A, what it felt like to be in a hospital from the perspective of a doctor, because usually when you're in A&E, it's because you're being seen for something. So you're coming at it from a patient's perspective, whereas I need to look at it from, from a doctor's perspective and um, to understand the flow and uh, the language it, it needed to, it needed to feel seamless so that we're not delivering lines or exposition even when we when we go into the to the medical world or medical jargon um, mm -hmm. and the first thing I did was like I went through the entire script and I was like oh my god there's so much medical terminology I don't have a clue any of it means and so I got myself a, a an Oxford mm -hmm. medical uh dictionary and just mm -hmm. underline everything and then you know flagged it in it and go back and I talked to Grace the writer and she was just an amazing at hand, you know, walking encyclopedia for this because she would explain in the in the best detail of of what that would look like, what that would feel like, and how she felt like when she was in that situation. So, mm. you know, it was a it was an amazing experience to have all those resources and to have a medical team on on site that mm. would be checking everything after each take to make sure that it was as medically accurate as it could get. Mm. I love that because it's the same with like um, line of duty when they're doing all their kind of um, their in the, in the in the kind of interview rooms and stuff. All the kind of the jargon. A lot of it I don't understand, but as an audience member, I don't really mind. I don't understand. It's okay for it to go over my head when authenticity yeah. comes to the forefront. But I mean, having but having kind of as you mentioned, shadow doctors and obviously your mum being in that industry. So I mean, they truly are superheroes. I mean, they should be paid more. But I mean, having now played a doctor, put yourself into the mind of a doctor. Does that make their work, their pressures, and their emotional resilience? seem even more admirable to you now yes as you said like superheroes like i've always wanted to play a superhero and you associate that with marvel yeah. these are real superheroes mm. like really to, to be to have an incredible strength to be able to do this job and take on what is extraordinary pressures mm. of you know this is they have people's lives in their hands literally and for me it's the 
a, a sheer admiration to when they showcase the patience mm-hmm. for patients, you know, that you could have people who are waiting four or five hours to get seen. And then by the time they come to you, you're, you know, it's, it's what I noticed when I was shadowing in A&E was that the moment a patient would see the doctor coming through the that door was that that sigh of relief because finally it's like you have to make the patient feel safe and that's what you do it's it's like this I believe they have like a superpower you know that is mm. that is what you know in and I value them so much as you know it's, it's they're one of the most selfless folk well, yeah, you know how we're like in a, or when we're at work, we can kind of get a bit bogged down by kind of like, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? And kind of being stressed about sort of early call times. And I was kind of, I just wondered if kind of p- putting yourself into the head of someone who has to go through, you know, like a matter of life and death and the mistakes they make could be so huge. I just wondered if it kind of took the pressure off being an actor, if that makes, maybe it doesn't Oh, make I sense. know what you mean. Yes. Okay. So yeah, you kind of realize, well, even though sometimes, you know, we, we would have one go at some of the takes, it would feel like it's life or death, mm. <laughs> you know, it would feel like because we've only got one, one take of this, but it's not, it's, you realize that I tell stories for a living, you know, I don't save people's lives. And so, um, not saying that I'm putting my job down or saying that it's, it's not a real job. It's just that I'm lucky that I get to create difficult conversations for that you know that that need to be had and so that's you just realize what your role is as as an artist as you know but yeah that's um I think that yeah we had like the thing is doctors don't have a chance to go again Mm. (laughs) you get to do it once and a lot of these procedures that they that you see in the show it's some some of them it's the first time they're doing it Mm. these doctors will be doing this for the first time um and so that you can kind of feed into as a as a as an actor you can feed off that energy because you are trying to essentially you're doing it for the first time and you have to make it believable but if your hand begins to shake because that's your own nerves seeping in that's completely fine because i'd be talking to grace and she'd be like yeah sometimes my hand would be shaking Mm. and that is normal because you know you're cutting someone's chest open I mean, that's funny, when we start watching this suddenly there's a kind of moment we sort of think what do we know of Lucinda and can we kind of trust her and what's I was wondering when you first read the script and you know you're going to be playing that role is there quite a nice moment where you, you yourself question how much you know about them that there's a they're kind of begin there's one stage where they have secrets even even from you yeah I think that when when we were shooting this we didn't have the last two episodes until mm. we had begun filming. So you, it was almost like you couldn't, as a as an actor, you couldn't end market. Mm. You didn't know where that I suppose the end of your arc was going to bring you. So, it, which is in some ways great because you're just playing the scenes as what they are. You're not going like, oh, I need to hold back here because you know that that big explosive moment's going to happen later and. In episode three, it's like, no, you just you know, play the scenes for for the truth and what they are. Um, yeah. I'm really loving all your choices at the moment, though. So you're sort of interesting, sort of just moving so seamlessly between kind of TV and film. I just wondered, is there like a, a game plan for you, a kind of sense of, right, now I want to do a movie or now I want to do this? Or are you just following the best roles and kind of seeing where it takes you? Um, it's, it's looking at... I don't know. It's like you, you mature with mm. your characters. And I think it teaches you some stuff about yourself. It teaches you about, you know, where, where the conversations are happening and what conversations I suppose need to be addressed. And um, I'm, I'm, I spend my time watching documentaries. I'm just fascinated with people and, um, yeah, it's it's a strange one. I've not. It's it's always like, how do you? It's always that question of like, how do you see yourself in five years? And it's, I suppose it's just like you just want to be working with great directors, great writers, and challenging yourself. And I I love challenging this for me. Like to play a doctor has always been on my bucket list. Mm-hmm. It's it's like my Everest of you know 
trying to learn all the medical terminology and you know be physically performing it mm. at the same time um whilst a character was going through such an emotional roller coaster it's like those are all these incredible ingredients that you want in a script and in a project that it's so layered and um yeah so it's mm. it's I love film I love tv I just I love my job yeah <laughs> do you mean just because you've worked with some brilliant directors of course I mean you're starting off with Shane Meadows to now obviously Philip Barantini I just wondered if you have any ambitions to direct yourself one day I would love to direct one day Stefan it's been something that um I've always had at the back of my mind since I was a kid mm -hmm. and I will I'm just figuring out what that story is going to be brilliant well hopefully we'll yeah but, <laughs> well, hopefully we'll catch up again when that time comes I'm sure oh, well thanks so much Neve, and best luck with the release of the show thank you so much ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys <laughs> hey you guys <laughs> hey that's what they all say hey you guys hey